Happy Friday, people of God. This is Evangelist Yonder. Better yet, you can just call me Yonder. I just wanted to hop on here real quick and give you guys this lesson. Um, I'm doing this lesson solely because I've had so many men come in my comment section or underneath my community tab and basically tell me that women aren't supposed to preach and that I'm wrong. I even had a lady come into my community tab and she wrote me a whole novel basically saying, oh, they're correct. You're not supposed to be doing it. Like people aren't supposed to be celebrating the holidays. I don't celebrate the holidays. And anybody that truly knows me outside of YouTube, they know that I don't celebrate the holidays. I just got onto my community tab and asked, what were some of you guys doing for uh, Christmas because I said that I fast on Christmas. Okay. But neither here or there, she ended up telling me that I needed to go and ask God for forgiveness for what I'm doing. Okay. I'm going to actually glorify him for what he's doing because I thank him for placing the mantle over my head. Okay. I have people that are connected to me. They're going to be connected to God and that God will be glorified that his people will be getting saved. So I just thank God for that. Okay. Now, um, I just feel like sometimes we, as the body of Christ, we're weak in numbers because we're too busy coming up against each other, or we're too busy taking one scripture, one verse and beating each other over the head with it. And that's so ugly. And God doesn't want that. Um, I'm going to teach this. I hope you guys receive it in love and I would love, love, love to hear the feedback. And, um, I thank all of you for um, liking, subscribing, and sharing my videos. I thank you all. So the title says, Are Women Supposed to Preach? I think um, the one scripture that so many people use when saying that is 1 Corinthians 14 and 34. And it says, the women should keep silent in the churches for they are not permitted to speak, but should be, be in submission as the law also says. Okay. So when I was in fact, like committedly going to church, um, I was doing exactly that. I was being obedient. I was just saying not one single word. I was in submission, although I was getting prophecies from plenty of men and women of God saying that the, that God was going to place me where I'm at. I mean, I, I came from a prophet. My father was a prophet and he prophesied to me years ago when I was a little girl that he told me that this is where I'm supposed to be and where God was going to place me. I, God has even used strangers to come and prophesy on where I'm at today. So it's not about an accident or a coincidence. This is where I'm supposed to be. And I finally said yes to the call. Okay. And it took me a while because I was doing just like Jonah. I was running away. I just wanted to stay in my own bubble and mind my own business. However, I said yes, and I thank God that I did. Okay, now um, I need you guys to understand something. I went through the Bible, okay, and I found some very credible women that were prophetess, that were doing the will of God, and God honored them, and God had favor with them, and they were doing ministry work. So let's talk about them. But we're going to also talk about a very, very powerful scripture. Let's get straight to it. Um, it is written in the Bible. Luke then quotes our verse from Joel in Acts 2 and 17. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. That's so, so powerful. Because I am a daughter of the most high Yahweh. I am that I am. God has given me, you know, the gift of prophecy. God has given me gifts of dreams and visions. Okay, so I'm doing my father's will. That's confirmation in itself. Like I don't really even have to go any further. God said that he was going to pour out his spirit on all people. So all of us that's in position of receiving God's spirit, we shall prophesy, okay? 
Now let's go more into the Bible. If you go to Acts 18, Priscilla and Aquila was um, introduced and they were a first century Christian missionary married couple described in the New Testament. Aquila is traditionally listed among the 70 disciples. They lived, worked, and traveled with the Apostle Paul, who described them as fellow workers in Christ Jesus. Paul lived with Priscilla and Aquila for approximately 18 months. So basically, Priscilla and Aquila were missionary work. Workers doing the will of God, preaching and teaching the will of God. Okay. And they were married and yes, they allowed Priscilla to, to do her father's will. They, they allowed her to be a part of that. Okay. Now let's go to Miriam. And now I know you guys know Miriam. Miriam was the sister of Moses and Aaron, Miriam, the prophetess. In Exodus 15 and 20, she was assigned to watch Moses when he lay as a baby in the bulrushes. Um, the Lord spoke directly to her and Aaron when they took pride in their prophetic gifts. He cursed Miriam with leprosy, Numbers 12, 1 through 16. She later uh, was named one of the three who helped lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed thee out of the house of service. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. That's Micah 6 and 4. You can also go back to Exodus 15 and 20. So, a Miriam had a prophetic gift. But due to her having pride, God cursed her. And you can go and read it for yourself. So, how is it that, you know, God was you know, blessed her to have a prophetic gift if it wasn't meant for her to have it. Yes, it was meant for her to have it. Okay. She even helped lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. She was really doing our father's business because those people were murmuring and complaining the whole time. Go read it for yourself. Okay. Now let's get to Deborah. Deborah was directed by the Lord to know when to go to battle, helping to free the kingdom from a foreign king. Deborah rightly was able to say, I arose a mother in Israel. That's Judges 5 and 7. And you can go and look at Judges 4 and 4. So God saw highly of Deborah and placed her in a position to um, prepare for battle. And she, she was doing the Lord's will. God equipped her to do his will. Okay. Now I know that I'm probably going to be pronouncing this wrong, but I'll spell it first. Her name was H U L D A H. And I'm going to say it was Hulda. Hulda lived in name in the time of a righteous King Josiah. She prophesied that the wicked people of Judah would feel the wrath of God, but that Josiah would be blessed. Second Kings 22, 14 and 20. Okay. She prophesied to him. God used her as a prophetess to prophesy to him. The word is fulfilling itself. And I kind of think that we're, you know, sums in up whether or not a woman should be able to preach or teach the word or even prophesy. It's all to give God the glory. And from what I'm reading, he's most definitely assigned some powerful women to do his will. Okay. Now, um, Isaiah, Isaiah and Isaiah three said that, um, we, even though we know just a little bit about his wife, he called her a prophetess and that she bore him children and that were named by the Lord. And I'm assuming and that the reason why Isaiah called his wife a prophetess, and that's because she was connected to the prophetic gift that was placed on his life. You know, when a man and a woman are married, they are as one. Okay, so he was a prophet, which made her to be a prophetess. So, you know, there's another one. Then we can look at Anna. Anna was an 84 year old widow who was present when Jesus was taken to the temple as a baby. Luke wrote that she departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. When she saw the baby, baby, she gave thanks unto the Lord and spake of him all that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Luke 2, 36 and 38. 
okay, now, if Anna was, you know, speaking to people that was looking for redemption, what was she doing? She was teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. She was preaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. So there you have it, people. Yes, women can, in fact, preach and teach the word of God as well as prophesy. However, I'm going to go back to saying that you must be in obedience, holiness, listen to the word of God, listen to the Holy Spirit and not man. Because I'm telling you, man will tell you to go left and God will tell you to go right. Be obedient to God. I hope and I pray that this blessed someone because it's biblically sound. It's of the word. It's of God. I love you all with the love of God. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for following this ministry. Thank you for your prayers. Um, until next time, be blessed. <laughs>